Welcome to Lesson 5. In Lesson 5, we will explore the five major educational philosophies and how each one can shape classroom life. You will have an opportunity to inventory your own personal beliefs about education and compare those to the five classic educational philosophies. After reflecting on your beliefs, you will draft your own personal philosophy statement. There are five classic philosophies of education. We can place them on a continuum from teacher-centered to student-centered. Essentialism and perennialism are teacher-centered, while progressivism, social reconstructionism, and existentialism are student-centered. Teacher-centered philosophies emphasize the importance of transferring knowledge, information, and skills from the older generation to the younger. The teacher's role is to instill respect for authority, perseverance, duty, consideration, and practicality. Success is demonstrated through tests and writings and actions that adhere to traditional and moral behavior. Essentialism accumulates knowledge of civilization through core set of courses. They frown upon electives that water down academic content. They agree with a back to basics approach to train the mind, promote reasoning and ensure common culture among all Americans. Mastery is necessary to be promoted. This philosophy is teacher-centered. Perennialism is also teacher-centered. It focuses on books, ideas, and concepts, and students learn directly from the great books. It believes that the goal of education should be to develop rational thought and to discipline minds to think rigorously. It pays special attention to teaching values and character trainings. Many religious or parochial schools reflect the perennialist tradition. Teachers rarely lecture, but facilitate discussion seminars. Student-centered philosophies are less concerned with the past and training of the mind, and more focused on individual needs, contemporary relevance, and preparing students for the changing future. They place the student at the center of the educational process, and students and teachers work together. Progressivism is a teacher-centered philosophy. It has organized schools around the concerns, curiosity, and real-world experiences of students. The teacher facilitates learning by helping students formulate meaningful questions and devise strategies to answer those questions. The answers are derived from real world experience. They apply pragmatism when an idea is tested and if it works in the real world, it has merit. The teacher is typically not standing at the front of the classroom with desks in a row, but students are working in small groups, moving about freely. Teaching often occurs through field trips, computer simulations, and interactive games and websites. Social reconstructionism is also student-centered. It encourages schools, teachers, and students to focus their students' energies on alleviating social inequalities and reconstructing society into a new and more just social order. Teachers model democratic principles. Their role is to explore social problems suggest alternative perspectives, and facilitate student analysis of these problems. Existentialism places priority on students directing their own learning. They believe the purpose of education is to help students find the meaning and direction in their lives, and that adults should not direct meaningful learning for students. They believe that truth is subjective and that each student should decide what he or she needs to learn and when to learn it. It is a powerful rejection of traditional thinking and the most challenging of the philosophies. It focuses on humanities and tends to de-emphasize math and sciences, 
It is self-paced and self-directed. In the age of high-stakes testing and standards, few schools implement existentialism, and most that do are private schools. In addition to these five classic philosophies of education, there are psychological influences shaping today's school. The first being constructivism, which is also student-centered and asserts that knowledge cannot be handed from one person to another, but must be constructed by each learning through interpreting and reinterpreting information in an effort to make sense of it. It involves scaffolding, which provides supports for students through questioning, clues, and suggestions to link prior knowledge to the new information. In a constructivist classroom, students and teachers constantly challenge their own assumptions. Constructivism dovetails with authentic learning, critical thinking, individualized instruction, and project-based learning. Behaviorism is the complete opposite of constructivism because it derives from the belief that free will is an illusion and that human beings are shaped entirely by their environment. If you alter a person's environment, you will also alter his or her thoughts, feelings, and behavior. They believe people react in response to a physical stimuli, such as positive reinforcement which is often used to encourage a desired behavior. You will be asked to complete an inventory of philosophies of education by reading through statements and deciding how strongly you agree or disagree with them. Once you have completed this inventory, you will then reflect upon your answers and the information from this lesson to draft your own personal philosophy statement. Also consider the following questions. What qualities do good teachers have? What is the role of the teacher? What is the role of the student? What adjectives describe your teaching style? What is the most effective way to motivate students? What should students learn in school? What is the most effective way to assess student learning? And what is the purpose of school?